Hey everyone, it's Sarah the Redneck by Focal Stitcher. Welcome to my floss tube, all about cross stitch. Today is Tuesday, January 9th, and this is episode number seven. I am coming to you from the floor in the room of creativity. This is actually the corner of the floor in the room of creativity. Um, I had everything set up on my desk. My ring light decided to give up the ghost, and I set up two of my ot lights to use as light sources and i will tell you right now if you ever want to know what you look like mostly dead use an ot light as your source because oh it's something else so here we are floor corner least amount of shadows grace greatest amount of light so definitely an exercise in going with the flow which is what i'm trying to do this year um so welcome if you're new and if you're returning, it's good to see you again. I am not going to be doing a whip parade just yet. Um, I feel like I did one too recently having started filming floss tubes in what, August? So um, I think it's too soon for a whip parade. I will probably do one in March for my birthday. And then um, plans, I, I'm kind of letting some of my stitchy groups dictate where I'm going with my whips. Um, in this first week of the year, I have already worked on two or three different projects that I didn't even have on my radar simply because I needed to fulfill a prompt and they worked. So um, that being said, everything that I had written down and planned out the window, I'm going with the flow and it's actually working out a little bit better than I had anticipated. So here we are, it's a win-win situation. I don't have to plan, somebody else has already done it for me. I just need to sit down and stitch. It's great, it's working out fantastic. I've even gotten more stitching done than I had anticipated. So here we are, we'll just keep going. I hope I can keep that momentum. Anyway, um, really quickly, I want to fix something that I had erroneously um, stated in my last floss tube, which was the name, <laughs> the name of this pattern, which is actually the cold snowman, not burr, it's cold outside. Burr is a pattern from Brenda Gervais, which I actually have in my to start pile for this year. I don't know when, but maybe it'll get started. So anyway, I, I'm guessing um, because it just randomly came to me on like a Thursday afternoon or something, I'm wondering if someone had been watching my floss tube and said, no, you dingling, it's not that, it's this, and shouted it out into the ether. And it came into my mind because it was just like there. And here we are, cold snowman, Bent Creek, love this little guy, stitched it in 2010. So it's been a hot minute since I've had to recall the name of it anyway. <laughs> so to get things started for 2024, I picked up Snow from Bent Creek. Um, this is something that I stitched in, I think, 2022. Um, this fabric is evidence from um, one of the Black Needle Society's Novels and Needles boxes. Um, this was for their first um, box of that kind. And it is uh, from Steel City Stitchers. Jody did this, it's 32 count. There we go, in a roundabout way, fabric. Um, I used all of the called for colors. I had originally started it on a neutral because me, and these letters were blending in way too closely. So I thought this was a better fabric choice and I love it. I'm loving this so much. Um, the snow letters are in like one of the 900s, like a 920, 932 maybe. And then these swirls are an aubergine, um, an over dyed floss, but everything was called for. Very few colors, super fun stitch, um, stitched up pretty quickly and I'm happy with how it turned out. So there is snow from Bent Creek. And then um, I did have my very much so down to the wire last minute buzzer beater finish for 2023, which is Big Hearted Tiny Town. 
I love this one so much. This is the piece that I worked on while I was waiting in line at Disneyland um, and had a few people comment and um, I am just so happy with how it turned out. I did have my casualty where I had lost my bobbin of whitewash um, on like the last day maybe. And so I just finished what I could for this side and then um, let it go. But I finished this on New Year's Eve. I used all of the called for colors. This fabric is either a 30 count or a 32 count um, Charlotte's Pink from Weeks Dye Works. I love this pink so much. Um, pink is not a color that is common in my wardrobe and in my house. So I, I'm loving how just phew, this gives it perfect little pop of color. So I am also trying to figure out how I wanna finish this. I am thinking it could make a really cute pillow. Um, it's, it'd be a longer pillow, but I don't know. I'm, I've got my sewing machine set up. Now that I'm feeling a little more comfortable with it, um, after having finished all of those stockings by myself, instead of sending them off to someone else, um, I'm feeling a little more confident in my sewing ability and feel like maybe I can do a few different methods of finishing over this year. And speaking of stockings, um, here are a couple pictures. The stockings did make um, their way to Florida. And this first picture is my niece holding up her stocking, which I did in like 93 or 94. Um, I couldn't tell you who finished it. I just, I stitched it. My mom sent it to someone, gave it to a friend who finished it for her. And um, that's, so that's Alex's stocking and she is holding her son's stocking. And then a um, couple more pictures of the stockings themselves. So, um, and then my sister, Laura, whose husband, Stephen, is the one I made the scuba stocking for. She texted me and said that, you know, he's a man of very few words. Um, it's just how he is. And he said that he really liked it. And she said for him to make a statement like that means that he absolutely loves it. So I'm just happy that everyone has their stockings and, um, I have, not closed that stocking era, but it is on a hold for now. Knock on wood. So anyway, um, now to show you what I've worked on over the past week. Um, I don't have stats for 2023 because I didn't bother keeping any until I started floss tube. So um, I'm going to do better in 2024. I want to start doing... Um, filming more frequently and better record keeping. It's just something that I can work on to, it, I don't know, satisfy my own personal need. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Let's talk about stitching. So here is, I don't need my whiteboard. Um, here is Stitchy Witchy Bell Pull from Stitchy Pros. This is the one that's on the 40 count piece of spicy mustard from Fiber on a Whim. This is only two colors, color and, um, sorry, not color and cotton, classic color works, um, Blackbird and Rainy Day. I'm loving how this is stitching up. Um, I was going to do this for my one strand a day, but it's going to fill a lot of, um, monthly challenges for me. So I'm just going to work on it as I can. There it is. Um, yeah. Next up, um, I did start Peace on Earth from Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. This is a new to me designer. I've never heard of her before. Her name is Lori Pingali. Pen Pengeli. I'm sorry if I'm getting that incorrect. Um, this came in the 2023 nice list box from the Black Needle Society and I pulled it out and knew that this was going to get stitched up so quickly. Um, I was looking for an excuse to start it, so I started it. Um, I used this for one of my challenges. I can't remember which. Um, I'm using all of the called for colors, which are absolutely beautiful. 
on um, a 36 count piece of oh, pointer. Um, what is it? Marbled pointer from XJU Designs. And this is the first time I've stitched on XJU and I'm really, really liking it. So here are the colors. There's the fabric and here's what I've done so far. Just about 300 stitches on the roof of the house. Um, I'm a sucker for center starts, I'm telling you. So I always start on those houses. And this little needle minder came in um, one of the nice list boxes. I think it was 2022, I could be wrong. But anyway, there's my little start on Peace on Earth. And I th think this one will be a quick stitch. Oh, I really shouldn't say that. And I'm going to interject really quickly. Crystal Christmas. I know that I said that was going to be finished by the end of the year and I can't remember, gosh, who was I watching last night floss tube wise? They had mentioned that, oh, it was Lala D. She was talking about the beating on Stargazer. I think it was Lala D. She was talking about, oh my gosh, the stitching is great, but the beating is a little, not tedious, but it's way more time consuming than you would think. And boy, howdy, have I run into that with Crystal Christmas. And I put it down and didn't pick it up for a very long period of time. And I'm wondering if the reason why I stopped stitching in certain areas was because I had made an error or something happened. So I'm it's just going into my rotation. I'm going to be working on it. I am not saying that it's going to be done anytime soon. I just want to get it done. I will finish Crystal Christmas. <laughs> no particular time. I want to stop. For... Hannah Wollstone Holmes birthday. She had a little Instagram um, hashtag that was a sal for, um, was it a fancy lady? Hannah's doing the fancy lady. Cross Stitch the Globe is doing the princess. Yes, I think that's how it is. Oh my gosh, I'm bad. <laughs> I, I don't have it written down. That's why I can't recall. But um, this is what I pulled out for Hannah's birthday sal. On Instagram um, I worked on just these little bows down here at the bottom of her dress and this is one of my process stitching I love this one I'm not in a hurry to finish it I love working on a color and then um, seeing how it plays out and affects the bigger picture her the bodice of her dress I just think that's absolutely beautiful and I know the stitching right here is kind of wonky. I don't know why I did it that way. I'll fix it. <laughs> but anyway, this is what I worked on. This needle minder came to me from um, my Bookish Besties swap, um, swap partner. Um, I had listed Snowflower and the Secret Fan as one of my favorite books. And she bought this um, because of it. And I, I love it. I love this needle minder so much. So there is that. I also worked um, quite a bit on Salem Sisters Apothecary. Here's where I started um, at the beginning of the month. And here is where I am now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I did make a mistake somewhere. And I'm not going to point it out because it's not super noticeable um, if I don't know. I can see it, but it shouldn't be noticeable to anybody else. And it's going to drive me nuts if I don't fix it. It's more than I would like to frog, but for my own non-go-with-the-flow frame of mind, um, I have to fix it. So um, more for aesthetic than anything. So this is my progress on Salem Sisters. I'm so, so excited with how close I am to being um finished. This is on a piece of 32 count spice tunny from Color and Cotton and I'm just using DMC 310 for it. The pattern calls for maybe coal or mascara and I've got plenty of DMC lying around 310 so that's what I'm using. 
really, really like this one. And then um, I also worked on Live on Little. I got quite a bit done on this one. Um, I wanted to get the roof finished and I did. Um, I, gosh, this is such a rookie mistake. I did a page break right there and I, I can see it. And I know that because I'm pointing it out, you can see it maybe at a different angle of light. I don't know, but of course I point out the negative and then that's all you can see. Go with the flow. Um, yeah, positive. I finished so many bricks on this. I finished the roof section and I'm farther along than I thought I would be. There's my three positives. So um, I'm going to keep working on this. Um, this is going to fulfill a lot more of my challenge stitching as the month goes along. So this is going to stay on the Q-snaps and um, I'm, yeah, I, I love this one so much. Way bigger than I thought and like someone else had mentioned, um, oh, it was Second Wind Stitcher, Angie. <laughs> She, she was like, you look at those plum streets and you think they're not that big. Um, and then you start stitching on it and there's so much to it. Yeah, this, this is live on little. I don't know why. Same with um, another one that I just got. Freedoms something. I was like, oh, that's a cute little pattern. I get it. Oh, it's a bap. <laughs> oh, whatever. I will still stitch it. So anyway, there's that. And did I say the fabric on this? It's 36 count Shrekis Tan from Needle Bling and I'm using all the called for colors. So, oh, live on little. And then um, there was one group that I was in and um, I decided it was a little too much out of the gate for me. And so I'm still in the group, but I'm not participating in this month's activity. Um, I think so anyway I started oh, you guys, let me write this wrong um, this is welcome foolish mortals from the witchy stitcher I'm super excited to be starting this um, this is a 32 count piece of nightmarish from be stitch me and this um, came in the trick box I want to say of um, Black Needle Society last year. I love this one. Needle Minder, also Haunted Mansion. I got this one years ago from Mad for Minders. I think she still has these ones available. I've got all four of the stretching portraits. But yeah, Haunted Mansion is my favorite and there's a fun little story to that as to why it is. Um, when I was little, we were at Disneyland and as you're coming down into the graveyard scene, your doom buggy is going backwards and you're at a little bit of an angle and then it turns you to the left so that you can see everything. And that time that I was on the ride, there was a cast member who was starting to walk up the hill. I don't know why they were there, but our doom buggy started turning and they were standing right there and ah, freaked out. It scared the living daylights out of me. And then from there on out, I was like, this is the best ride ever. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know, six-year-old Sarah. So there's that. Um, that's all the stitching that I've done for this week. And then I mentioned that I have two planned starts. One of them is um, with Angie, the second wind stitcher. And I kind of invited myself to her start. And this is one of those, my grandmother taught me to never invite myself over to somebody's house. Well, I invited myself over. I'm like, let's do a stitch along. She had mentioned it on a floss tube a month or so ago. <laughs> and I was like, great, let's do a stitch along. And so um, thanks for entertaining the idea of letting me come to your start party on float and sting. So Angie and I are going to be starting um, float sting on Saturday the 13th of January. I am doing mine on a glorious 40 count neutral also known as vintage country mocha. <laughs> so um, yeah there it is. I'm excited. Um, this is a loaner from a friend so I will get this done and back to her. Okay the other start that I am doing is going to be a sal with a co-worker. She is fairly new to cross stitch. Um, started a hade for her first project and realized okay that was a little much 
So she um, moved to the Tiny Masterpieces on Etsy, has done a few other projects that are awesome. And she was excited to share a pattern that she had found on Etsy called The Four Elements. And I said, oh, this is perfect. We can do this together. I want to start this. And she said, okay, let's do it. So I ordered my fabric. It just came in the mail. It's a 32 count linen um, in black. I ordered it off of one, two, three stitch and we are good to go. So um, those are the things I have planned for this week. And that's really it. Um, I wanna say big thank you to Cross Stitch the Globe and Lancashire Stitcher and Second Wind Stitcher for their kind words and shout outs in their um, most recent um, floss tubes, whatever it is that we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's all I have for you. Um, I will see you next week and have some more progress to show you. Hopefully I'll have quite a bit of pretty stitching on this black fabric and that's it. So have a great day, have a good day stitching and I'll see you later.